So let's take a look. Here's an interesting intro. So right away, to get it right, you want to play pretty light, even though it says forte, but staccato notes, staccato chords. So what you're trying to do is create this upbeat, festive atmosphere, I suppose. And of course, as always, the most important technical move is that sudden jump to 2-5 there in measure 2. One more time. Right, so just stopping and making sure you've actually nailed that jump before you go on is important. Now that final chord that I'm holding on in my right hand shouldn't be really held. It has this kind of upside down V, which is a marcato sign, if you like. It has to be an accent and a staccato together. Maybe even add some pedal, who knows? Good experiment. But the important thing is it's just setting up this presto kind of flash of virtuosic intro. After that, pause, fermata, and you launch into this. Now, it says moderate bounce in that next measure, but of course, it doesn't make sense to start presto and then go to moderate bounce in the next, uh, in, in where it says moderate bounce. So I would really move that tempo indication to those pickup notes. And so a couple of things to notice about this beginning zoom in just a little bit. It's a good idea to go to finger one so that you instantly prepare five for note E. Alternatives you could start with finger two, three and then go to one. It doesn't really matter. But with that one on G where it says moderate bounce you're set to continue the melody for you know another couple of measures. When you bring in the left hand, you could do it like this. Or maybe try some pedal. I kind of like the pedal idea, even though this arrangement doesn't say to use it, but it doesn't say not to, it doesn't say no pedal. Um, so, again, I'll leave it up to you, but those are always the options with arrangements. Uh, it kind of flows nicely. And of course, what it also allows me to do, I'm going to go ahead and move a little bit down, is when I get to that, I'll highlight it with some color, I'm not sure which color yet. Let's try cyan. Right, so when I get to this place, with the pedal, I don't have to hold this. I can play it, pedal catches it, and then I can just move that down. Whereas without the pedal, if I want to go for the dry interpretation, I really want to make sure to move at the very latest by beat four. Now, of course, you can experiment with, with alternative fingers instead of, let's say, the, the three and five there. You could go something like, I don't know, you know, one, two or one, three, where you have to change position from across from the previous line. That could be done and then you would be more in position. But I would go for this pedaled version myself. I just think it works pretty well, both technically and musically. Right, so I can do this. I'm just waiting for my left hand to start playing in the this part. Right. You'll also notice that, of course, there are these important position shift moments, because when I start, uh, let me go back up a little bit, 
zoom out just a tiny bit. When I start at the top, firstly, I have to make that slight adjustment in the right and the left hand, and it doesn't look huge. There, you know, just one note in the fifth finger, two notes in the thumb, other fingers. But if you don't do it right, everything just falls apart. So there is that problem. Right, so that motion, that move, let's call it, I don't know, brown. Um, we have to stop and check we have executed it perfectly, otherwise uh, trouble. Now, of course, you don't want to do that when you're performing, because if you do that... Right, there's that weird gap for no reason. So you have to practice doing that, and then you just go for it. Right, and I've just jumped and instantly started playing. It's a very tricky technical move, but with some practice it can be achieved. Same thing with that, oh, another brown highlight here. Same thing, slight shift in the left hand, but you have to do it instantly and you have to launch right into the next uh, downbeat. Maybe let's do it a little slower. And of course here, uh, another troublesome spot. I'll use another highlight, let's say green, right here. We're about, and I'll use a bracket as well, just to show what I'm talking about. We're about to go into a completely new position in the right hand, right there. And so that means that I kind of want as many of my fingers ready as soon as possible. So during the green highlight, while holding the G, I could learn to do that. that motion will take care of every single finger except for one and that we can do when we get to the rest but so again i talked about these ways of pressing keys where it's not just one finger moves down and that's it right but other things happen whether it's you know fast arm motion or maybe it's some kind of twisting of the wrist or, or, or the hand, you know, deviating in some way. So here you're kind of doing this bending of the thumb, so you're bringing the second finger on the same key as the thumb, right? It's a specific move. So as I play, let's make it right here, as I play that G, I teach myself to do that rather than merely do that, because then I have to worry about position adjustments as they come up. So that green highlight, that's the move. All right, so with that in, uh, said and done, again, of course, I'll keep using the brown here. You launch right into the F major harmony and hopefully you're already in position for the right hand. So what you've noticed is Fifth finger in the left hand keeps going up a step, up a step, up a white key, up a white key, until we finally get to this final brown highlight right here. And then what happens? We stay on G, right? So that's why you see three and five. One, two, three, and five, because then we have to reset. Now, there is an alternative fingering for that pink highlight. Instead of using 5-3-1, which makes sense because that's exactly what we used up there for the same exact harmony. Because of what we're going to do afterwards, namely play this interval, G and F accent, we might want to use 2 on E, which means we could use 3 on C. Now that's an alternative, obviously there are pros and cons for any fingering, but since alternatives are good to consider, there it is as an alternative, simply because. It kind of solves the problem of that very sudden jump uh, to Sforzando. So something to keep in mind. Okay, by the way, while I'm holding that five, of course I'm extending to uh, 
the rest of the notes in my right hand. And you can see my thumb is pointing, if I keep pointing this way across my right hand, I kind of feel like my right elbow is cramping me. So roll over the left hip, yeah. And then reset. So before you do anything, I'm going to do an indigo highlight, big reset before you launch back into the uh, same phrase you just played eight measures ago, yeah? So that's all you want to practice on that indigo highlight. Again, that chord is not this, it's not stay in place chord, but play as you jump, right? It's a very different way of feeling your performance uh, than you being in position and just doing, you know, just staying put in the same place. It's that way. Ah, very tricky. Okay, eventually you get it. And so then I'm not going to continue through this part because it's basically the same exact thing. I'm going to switch to this and it didn't start. Why not? Oh, there it is. Um, just to show you the bottom, there it is, maybe zoom out just a bit, yeah, again, same thing, one, same thing, I'm not forgetting to do it, of course, nah, wrong highlight, but you remember what I talked about, so bringing over the fingers of the right hand okay so all of this is the same we just went over it and at the top of this page next page let's go here come on there it is bum, 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 bum. having trouble zooming out as always there it is these devices sometimes get stuck for no good reason. Oh, still stuck. All right, well, I see enough of what I need to talk about. Oh, there it is, it just jumps. Yeah, I think I, I'll leave it alone. It doesn't want to play ball. So, um, right, that's the only difference, that triplet measure. Started behaving. That triplet measure is different from what happened before. Of course, before we had, you know, with that sforzando chord, but here's just a triplet and resolution to three and five in the tonic harmony. Yeah, I think that one going into three, five is a good idea. Otherwise you'll have to use the weaker five and four, which can be done, but again, if you can avoid it, why not? Again, same thing, big reset. Another indigo highlight before you start with anything. Luckily, in this case, your left hand is already in position, right? Five, three, and then there is one. It's just the right hand you really need to watch. There it is. Ah, so now it's different. We used to prepare fifth finger on the E because we would go da, 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 da. but this time we actually have to play a, you might say a canonic melody the one that imi imitative melody imitative me however you say it so it which imitates E E F G E E F G right so imitation and then E E D C G now notice we have to use four four three two one to play the continuation of the regular melody while holding that g long G in the d descant voice, discant voice, the treble voice, uh, which means that potentially if we wanted to be finger consistent, we could go back to the previous page right here and we can say, well, why not use finger four there? Oh, come on. So still having trouble with this. Uh, there it is. Okay, let's try again. So finger four on this first appearance of that E E D C G. Yeah, and same thing there. If come on, all right. Sometimes these PDFs don't want to play ball. Uh, 
there it is, uh, four again here. So that, sorry, you don't see what I did. Yes, uh, what I just added was this four right here. That's an option because that way when we do get into that second page, let's go back to the second page. Let's hope it behaves. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oops, goes back, goes to the... All right. All right, it's behaving. Thank you. I really need to update my iPad. Once these videos go viral, I'll have so many views. I'll afford it. But uh, in the meanwhile, this four, we're going to practice being in position. So three, three, four, five. And as I play the five, let's highlight it. I don't know, cyan. It means spreading out of all the fingers, which means my position will look like this. As opposed to something like that, where I just play the five and do nothing. Again, another example of a note where you have to do something other than just press the finger down. Yeah, it's a big move. You really want to feel it. Let's continue to that next line where things get really fun. Right? If you start in position, both hands in F major position basically, you're fine. Problem is getting there. So if we go back to the previous line, you're here. And then there's that huge move. Small move in the left hand. We have already practiced doing it on the first page, but a huge leap from this G right here, yeah. Since we, I'm electing to use the pedal, I actually have a lot more time than if you did it this way. Right, when you have to do it in the last moment. But with the pedal, might as well do it right away. Right, so by the, let's do a brown highlight again, or orange, I don't know what color it is really. Um, by the time we get to this measure, you want to stop and you want to, Really check. Left hand in position, yes. Right hand in position, kind of. Let's try again. Right, you just stop and check. And of course, if you have trouble getting somewhere and it's a really technically challenging moment, I always do this backwards step in method for myself. And that is you start at the brown. I need to be here. What do I have to do before that? I just have to play the G in the left hand. There's G, finger three, boom. All you have to do is move. One more time, G, move. Okay, then what do I have to do? C, C followed by the G, move. Right, I can have the pedal down. C followed by the G, right? That's all I'm practicing, a very specific move in the left hand. Of course, then you back up to G, and then C, G. Just two notes to press down, basically, and then do that brown highlight move. Okay. Eventually, you do have to hold the G. You do have to hold the E in the left hand, G in the right hand. And now, all you're doing is this. Right? Quite a lot going on. You have to move the right hand, followed by those three notes in the left hand, and also move in the left hand. But if you nail it, you've solved the problem. Some people might have trouble, in which case, let's move this brown highlight and let's say we're going to stop and check things right here as we play the C, right? So C in the left hand, I just have to press it, I don't have to move anywhere, but in the right hand I'm checking that I'm already in that F major position ready for, the sec for that following line. So I just keep it there, I press the C, yeah, all good, easy. Now backing up. So I'm gonna show you how I'm backing up. I'm, let's just go right through the note. I'm holding the G and I'm about to hit the C. The pedal is down, I don't really need to do anything. Just holding the G, right, I'm just pressing C down just to make sure I can do it, easy. But then I go back to right here, holding the G, holding the E, 
in whatever position I'm in. And now I get to that C, I get to that brown highlight, I stop and I make sure that position change has happened. All right, let's continue. Again, same kind of one note position adjustment in the left hand, but quite a big thing in the, le in the right hand. So let's do, I don't know, let's do another green highlight right here. I could hold my thumb underneath as a kind of a guide over which I move my long fingers. Could do that. Pedal is taken care of all the legato, of all, you know, connections between those thirds. But I could just as well let go of everything and move into this position. Four, two, four, and then one, two. So from F major to C major. I just think it makes it for a little more straightforward direction uh, than to try to, you know, do multiple steps uh, in position transition. Same thing there, right? Why wait? I'm going to hit this one and two, and I'm just going to move. I'm going to reposition right away. Right? I really don't need to play anything. I just need to learn to move. I'm here, and I need to be here. Just from here to here. It's, it's nothing but a physical sensation that you're trying to master. Now, here it gets tricky. We need to def determine which fingers we use in the right hand. I think five, 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 four, three makes sense. So let's put those in. Yeah, five, five, four, three. You could do five, 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 four, but there is no reason to. You could do four, four, one, three, and then one, two, a big stretch. But again, really no reason to do it. So that's the, the right hand. In the left hand, if you go with the shown fingers, then you go with one, 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 two. What's another possibility? I guess you could go with five, four, one, one, two, three, something like that. That's another possibility. There is really no good, you know, uh, solution that is superior to every other solution here. If you take this uh, slur or legato marking verbatim, probably you want to use legato fingerings, even if we're using the pedal. So something like maybe three, one, one, two, or maybe four, one, one, two, something like that. But with the pedal, it doesn't really matter, right? As long as you come up on that pedal when you hit the third beat, Still, it's a technically tricky measure. So as, as soon as you go like this, you know that, okay, chord, 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 beat three, beat four, beat one, next uh, line. But in getting into it is the tricky part. So again, if you can do this, okay, that should be easy. But getting into it, you know, that one, one in the left hand, I would isolate it. I would really practice, you know, this, bit. Now notice I'm making sure to keep the second finger on that D. No, no, that was 5-5. Five, five. Let's do 5-4. There are three notes you're controlling. Two thumbs that are jumping and then 5-4. Right, and then ready with the 1-3. That's a small isolated moment, but it's a very important moment because that's what makes the whole measure seem impossible. Of course, doing it twice is pretty straightforward. But it's really that jumping of one one to the next note in synchrony, which is what's so tricky. Right? Eventually you can back up all the way to the beginning of this measure. And as long as you've nailed this, the very fast, you know, five four in the right hand and one one, one one, all of these 
individual moments, then you should be set. All right, next line. And that's a perfect reason why we... Um, sorry, that's wrong. Yeah, that would be a 1 in the left hand and the 2-5 as shown in the right hand. Perfectly adaptable to the pedal, right? As soon as you play these, boom. So let's practice that. We're holding these down and all you want to practice is this. One more time. Very fast motion. So then when you play them, boom. Didn't land right in the left hand. You really, and I think same same as before. My nose, if it stays in the center, actually even a little off center. Right? Bad example for students. All right, so I'm in the center, right, right here, and I kind of want to shift slightly so that when I go from here, this is easy. If I'm still in the center, I kind of feel uh, my right elbow kicks me in the ribs. Right, if I'm out of the way. Ahead of time, I can do that more easily. But still, a very technical move, that jump. So, luckily, if you're in position, then getting into that sforzando chord is easy. All right, then we continue, and the melody is in the left hand, of course. Pretty easy, pretty good so far, but we're in trouble because we kept our thumb on the G. We have to be all the way up here. Now there is a chance that that's just what you have to practice. Right, that super fast move, let's I don't know, do a brown highlight. So at the end of the measure, um, you, you jump. Now notice, I'm actually not using the pedal here. There are a couple of reasons. Subito piano. You know, there's another name for this pedal, loud pedal. So I don't want to be loud. I could use the pedal. But I feel like I'm imp how do you, impinging, perhaps, upon these staccato articulations. It's kind of nice to have... To really bring them out for a contrast but maybe you might have a different interpretation so that's fine however that aside alternatively you could finger the left hand with three three four five because then look the first finger is already on top of that e here i actually wouldn't go to one two you could. The reason I wouldn't is because I, I want to use more of my fingers. I feel if I always do one, two, one, one, two, one, you know, instead of using one, two, three, maybe four and a five, I'm having to think too much about position shifts. But again, there is a reason how, for why this will work. But even if you like this idea of uh, turning thumb underneath, I would still propose using a four here and the reason is oh i'm sorry idiot i've been talking about it on my screen and it's completely cut off so let me go go back and reset all right so we see the last two lines kind of so what i'm talking about to back up just slightly is no no more zooming allowed ah, now it's zooming okay no, no. All right, so we're back to my device not playing ball, but um, I'm talking about that red four as an alternative. Why? Because then it naturally puts all the fingers in position for what's coming up. Maybe now? Yes. Um, one, one, two, right? We want to put two on the B. And if we use two on the G as instead of that red four, we will have to move it to B. Now with four, one, four. Do you see how the second finger goes right on top of that B? So I would do that. And that's, of course, the following page, which I'm not on yet. So let's put the whole thing together. Let's try to start with five. 
instead of the 3 so that it's easier to reach up to high E. 5, 5, 4, 3, and the... 1, 1, 2, 1. Right. Actually, that could be another 4, 5 moment, because if we're going with 4, 5 at the beginning of this last line, 4, 5, you can continue with that same idea. 4, 5, right? Why not? Makes it kind of consistent. But maybe I'll be put in my place with what's coming up on the next page. So let's see right here. Aha. Uh -huh. No, I think, I think it makes sense. You want four and then just a quick adjustment down to to what to those triplet right hand notes. So yeah, I, I would I would consider it anyway. All right, zooming in. Another alternative because of what's coming up is to go with two and four on uh, sorry not two and four instead of two and four you can consider going one and three and the reason is because then the rest of that line in the left hand works so nicely one three two two three four five right easy or instead of that five you can even prepare ahead of time by putting a one there because we have something crazy coming up right okay so backing up backing up uh, if we want to put one on that G, it means the A before that has to be a three. So let's go back to the previous page. Hopefully I don't get, all right. All right, okay. So, so instead of that one there, what if we had a three? Okay, of course my iPad is stuck. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh-huh, 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 okay, oh, it's grayed out. Okay, let's try it again. So instead of that one, let's try a three. How is that? Beautiful. And then with that three on A, put a one on G. Next page. There it is. And a one, three, two, two, three, four. Maybe one because because of what's coming up. In the right hand. Another case. Ooh, jumped. Um, <laughs> Another case of where I'll highlight this particular note. Don't just play it, actually shift the long fingers as you do. Right, so look. You essentially move from this chordal position to a five fingers close together position, F major. F major white keys. So on that green highlight, that's the move. That's it. And lastly, uh, can see what's going on. Yeah, a couple of different fingering options. I like, I think I like it. Yeah, that's the only weird one that I can consider. Instead of one, two, three, one, four on the top line, I guess you could do like two, one, two, three. I don't really know which I like the more. One has its own problems, this one is, has its own problems, so let's try this, one, two, three, one, four. What, what this is taking advantage of is, of course, the extreme flexibility of our opposing thumb. In the meanwhile, the fourth finger just waits, waits for its turn to play the G. In the meanwhile, four, one comes back out to stay on top of the B-flat. Finds it as I play through those F, G uh, in the previous measure. Um, maybe slide zoom out. There, we, there it is. So from the top of that top line, from the beginning of that top line,
consider doing that thumb underneath to play the one for that C. And a big move in the right hand. So another, let's make another green highlight. Again, if you decide not to use the pedal here, just for contrast, it means a very sudden jump. Right, that's what you want to stop and check. And then, uh, I think I'm in trouble. Yes, I am. Guess why? Yes, because that last position is not that, it's this. So it's important to place that fourth finger on the G as opposed to keep those fingers together. If you do that, then you will stutter and you will not find the G and then you will not find the next line's chord. So make sure that you do that position preparation on the green highlight. I'll, I'll mark those notes. There it is. Right, so I'm stopping on that green highlight, checking that fourth finger is on top of the G. Ah, uh, see, it wants to go to F because it's so much more common to have five finger C five finger position like that as opposed to that which is that kind of position that kind of pentatonic C pentatonic position all right one more time all right I even stop before the downbeat I I have my thumb tucked underneath I'm about to hit the C I've got my right hand in place on that green highlight and then I know I can continue and then we're into the second theme i'll stop right here if you have any questions please please ask comments or ask questions in the comments uh like and subscribe so that i can reach more people with this if you think other people will find it useful they probably won't it's probably too complicated but uh, click like anyway just in case so yeah, uh, maybe I'll do a part two if there are enough interested people asking for it.